There are no announcements except that since we weren't able to gather for our annual service of lessons and carols, Miss Lim and our vo vocal groups have recorded several beloved Christmas hymns to share with the community. We will be using three of those hymns for our last three weekday services for this year. Prepare your hearts and minds for our prelude. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Today's hymn is at once in Royal David City, sung by the chamber choir and chorus.
Let us pray. O God, from all, whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Amen. I ask your prayers for all who live and work in the borough of Pottstown. I ask your prayers for all who govern and hold positions of authority, especially the mayor and borough council, the governor, the president, and the president-elect. I ask your prayers for all whose lives have been touched by tragedy, whether by accident or by deliberate act. I ask your prayers for the sick. We pray for all suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic and for all risking their lives to care for others. I ask your thanksgivings for those celebrating birthdays in this part of the week. Kyle, Grish, Holly, Tina, Mr. Colgrove, Mr. Fader, and Mr. Murphy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. For your name's sake, amen. Our speaker this morning is Ms. Fisher. Ms. Fisher was hired in late 2015 as Hill's first ever Director of Community and Economic Development and Director of Hobart's Run Neighborhood District. She's the instructor of entrepreneurship and social enterprise and advises several clubs on campus. She has four daughters between the ages of 16 and 24 and enjoys DIY projects, mountain biking, cooking international food, playing the mandolin, and creative writing. Ms. Fisher. Good morning. It is truly an honor to share my heart with you today. I would like to dedicate this chapel talk to several groups of Hill students with whom I've had the absolute pleasure of working over the past five years. First, to the remarkably hardworking Hobart's Run Student Leadership Committee and the other clubs where I serve as an advisor. Second, to the students who have pitched ideas in the Pottstown Area Social Innovations Lab over the past few years. And last but not least, to the past and current students of entrepreneurship. Thank you for courageously stepping into the world of dreamers and innovators. You inspire me and motivate me to be my best self. While some of the things we do in life are mundane and we just complete them to get by, know that every time I teach you or work with you on a project, it is done with great love. I've titled this message, Roots and Radicals, Learning to Embrace Life's Complexities with Grace and Truth. This is a talk about finding value in what keeps us grounded as much as in what gives us flight. I'm going to start with a story because I like stories, but also because I think storytelling is valuable. His words stopped mid-sentence. Silence shrouded the young couple seated at the dinner table with their two small children. The only sound now was the clip-clopping of horse hooves beating on the stone-covered driveway only they weren't expecting visitors on this cold evening in 1964. Unless, of course, this was the inescapable moment they knew would come. Daniel Fisher rose from his cane-laced wooden chair, taking a few steps over to the window. His rigid posture and crossed arms indicated that all was not well in his Amish community. As the traditional gray and black buggy stopped just outside the horse barn, Every eye was on his taut face, watching as he swallowed hard and whispered, Yes, it's them. Priscilla, Daniel's wife, straightened to stand next to him as a symbol of support. They watched the Amish bishop and two ministers of the district descend from the buggy and make their way toward the house. Friends who had gone through this same ordeal had advised them to not let the church leaders into the house, rather to let the confrontation take place outside. A quick glance at the young children who were still seated at the table, innocently grazing over the delicious home-cooked food, added another reason to follow their advice. However, two factors weighed heavily on my parents. One was the fierce winter wind already whipping at the elderly men as they hastened their approach. The second was perhaps the most heart-wrenching detail of all. The elder minister was my grandfather. Graciously, Daniel opened the door and granted entrance to the shivering trio who had braved the cold winter temperatures for several miles in a less than airtight buggy. As is customary in Amish culture upon entering a home, the men removed their hats. However, they did not hang them on the provisionary pegs lining the kitchen wall, 
a clear sign that their visit was anything but pleasurable. The bishop stepped forward, his stern gaze intently focused on the couple's faces. Just behind him, the younger of the two ministers followed suit. The elder minister, Samuel Fisher, did not, choosing instead to fix his eyes on the sturdy wooden floor. With an air native to bishops alone, the Stoic leader of the church board opened the scriptures to 1 Corinthians 5 and deliberately read verses 11 to 13. You must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother, but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or a slanderer, a drunkard or a swindler. With such a man do not even eat. What business is it of mine to judge those outside of the church? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked man from among you. That was the night my father and mother were excommunicated from the Amish. That was the night we were emotionally and physically severed from dozens of relatives on my father's side of the family. That was also the night mom and dad were able to openly study the Bible with other young married couples, which is the reason why they were excommunicated. That was the night they found their truth, and that truth set them free. I was not always proud of my background. I avoided talking about it and did everything I could to better understand and fit into mainstream culture. When I turned 18, I moved to Mexico City and lived there for four years, followed by shorter stints in other cities, Miami, Baltimore, New York, and Philadelphia. Anywhere but home, I thought. I loved my family, but home was so insular and filled with the emptiness of never belonging in the Amish community and never belonging outside. However, in time, I revisited my roots, those deeply ingrained morals passed down through 250 years of a subculture. I fleshed through them without the watchful eyes of my parents and the church, allowing myself to decide what I believed and what I didn't. I found that I still appreciated many of the values, a strong work ethic, service to others before oneself, devotion to God, loyalty to one's community, and faith in the unseen. I also found some values that I made my own, if something is true, it will stand through questioning. If love is real, it will always win. If you have a voice, use it for good. If you have creative abilities, employ them for change. If you have an active mind, learn all that you can. In time, I made peace with my roots and embraced them as an integral part of my life journey. But what I couldn't seem to make peace with was the way those roots handled radicals. Radical, noun, progressive, revolutionary, fanatic, extremist, are all definitions of this word. While still Amish, my parents were called radicals because they were challenging authority established by God, yet the very system casting judgment was intrinsically radical. Was this the blind leading the blind? Looking back, mom and dad were radicals. They forged a new path in their early 20s, leaving all they knew behind and rebuilding their life at a new church while making new friends, starting a new business, learning how to do new things like drive a car and live with electricity. They took us all with them down that path, all nine of us children. We watched it all, lived it all, and all left home at 18 to find our own path. Although higher education was highly frowned upon in the Amish, we all obtained degrees, many advanced and a few doctoral, from higher education institutions including Harvard, Columbia, and Penn. Our family careers cover law, finance, psychology, education, theology, and public service. My brother became one of the youngest tenured professors at Brown and is working on his third book in Native American history. None of that may seem out of the ordinary to you, but getting there from our upbringing required tremendous determination. Paradoxically, it was the orthodoxy of our roots that fanned the flame of our radical. So it is with all of us, if we let it. What are your roots, your heritage, your value system, your traditions? Have you made peace with them? Have you let them fuel your search for truth, for sincerity, for wisdom, for belonging? Have you decided what you believe? I wouldn't expect you to say yes necessarily, because belief isn't static. It lives and breathes and moves with us, ebbing and flowing with life's seasons. What about your radical? In what ways does your search drive you to innovation, to progress, to revolution? It will if you let it. 
I don't stand before you today with it all figured out, not by any means. But I will leave you with a few takeaways, things I've embraced as a result of my own search. The first and the last one are from my roots. The two in between are from my radical. Number one, truth. John 8.32 in the Bible says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Commit yourself to finding truth, your truth, no matter what the cost, and sometimes the cost is great. Do it anyway, because then you will be free. Live in truth. Number two, resilience. Expect to get knocked down, to get up, and to try again. Expect it many times. Embrace failure as equally as you embrace success. Don't be afraid of hardship. Scott M. Peck says that fear of suffering is the root of all mental illness. When we transcend it, when we learn to accept difficulty, we live without fear. Motivational speaker David Goggins believes that most people only operate at 40% of their potential and that we would amaze ourselves if we dare to suffer discomfort in order to grow. Adopt resilience as a lifestyle. Number three, creativity. Close your eyes for a moment and picture your soul, your center, unseen but present inside of you. What does it look like? What color is it or colors? How does it move? How does it make you feel? I see mine as a flame with blue at the center, moving upwards into purple, red, orange, and yellow. It is strong and confident. It is bright. And I don't always feel that way on the outside. But when I look inside, that's what I see. Whatever you see, that is your core. It is your life flow where you are powerful beyond measure. It is from this place that you can do whatever you set your mind to and become whatever your heart desires. I believe it is where the divine has a home and what makes us one with nature and the universe. Care for your soul so that you can be your best self and give to others from that place of strength. Dream big, go after your goals, have faith in what is not yet seen and act like you already have it. Create your own reality by defining who you are and what you want to do in life. Be wonderful, creative you. Number four, love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. If love is real, it will always win. I've been through my share of disappointments, failures, and losses, all of which caused me to question God and my faith. The questioning didn't bother God at all, but it did bother some other people. When that flame inside of me dulled to an ember, what fanned it into flame again was love, love from others and love from God. Love others with determined compassion because love always wins. I will end with a blessing often used as a benediction from Numbers 6, 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.